G'day, Bird Mad Pete with you one more time to talk about multi rotors and today a very special little flight controller. Yep, it sure is little. I think it's the smallest one I've got. $25 and its big asset is simplicity. Well, simplicity, that's a very worrying thing, Pete. What do you mean by simplicity? I mean no USB port. No connecting it to computers, no flashing, no downloading, no messing about. Oh, don't like the sound of that, Pete. I'm sure half of you have turned off already. But novices may suddenly think to themselves, hey, hey, the man's hit the jackpot. This is what we need. I think it's what lots of older pilots need. Let's go down the field and see how I went on my first outing. I think I forgot to tell you something. The wind was blowing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 10 to 15 knots with gusts to 20, I'm thinking. Now, you will have also noticed that there were two hops there. On the first hop, I wasn't quite happy with how everything was going. So I landed it, and I inserted this little screwdriver, thoughtfully provided by Thunder QQ Super, and I gave it a twist and made the second launch and it was going much better and so we did a circuit. Now I'm sure that if I was flying this aircraft every day of the week there'd be a series more micro twists of the screwdriver and I would get it all tickety-boo. But that's how easy it is with this system. Let's have a look at model number two. Almost as soon as I got it in the air, I realised I had a problem. I realised I was going to have to land it, make some adjustments. But I thought, no, no, I'll get a few pictures. So, there you saw it. I did land, I did make some adjustments, and it didn't make much difference. I don't think you need to see too much more of that. The smell of an old man's fear does nothing for watching YouTubes. I got it back. I had to fight like a tiger and I'm proud of the achievement. But it wasn't until I got home that I saw the problem. I'd been blaming myself, I'd been blaming the weather, I'd been blaming the flight controller. Oh yes, you bet I blamed the flight controller. But when I watched the video, there's a funny noise. Bad bearings, not that one, not that one. Ooh, 
it rocks at least a millimeter on either side. Now, I don't care how much you paid for your flight controller, strapping it onto the biggest computer in the world is not going to solve that problem. <laughs> you need a bigger screwdriver than the one that Thunder QQ Super gave me. <laughs> okay, enough of the jokes. Model number three. I've got all the trims set at neutral. Arming. There's a light wind. This aircraft has six legs, which always complicates the ground handling. Okay, that's 12% and it's really rock and rolly. I don't like it at all. If I leave the controls totally alone, it's sort of okay. That's hands off now and it's sort of okay. But the moment you touch the controls, it rocks and it rolls and I don't like it. So, I'm landing it and I'm going to adjust the trim to 25%. Okay, that's a big 25%. That might be 30%. Let's see what happens this time. Ah, much better. You always get a bit of an indication. If you've got a big pit error, you usually get an indication as you bring the throttle up. Did you notice how it really lifted off the ground before it was even in the air? It was, lo it was looking as if it was stable. I'll open it up again. This is still 25, 30%. It's not rocking as it did previously. Now, I'll give it a nudge to get it into the air, and it goes up dead straight, and it's hovering fairly well. I'm gonna raise the pitch now to 40%. Okay, we got 40%. Now, I think you'll see a big difference. I'm expecting that now it will show evidence of shaking, arming, opening the throttle. Oh yes, that's what I hate. Uh, first of all, the throttle has become very sensitive. And do you see that kind of hammering shudder? Very hard to hold a low altitude. I'm hoping that the camera is seeing this. I'm landing it. Now just for a bit of excitement, I'm going to show you what happens at 50%. At 50%, the little slot that the screwdriver is sitting in, at 50% that slot is aligned fore and aft. So, arming. I'm expecting violent shaking now. Oh yes, not as, not as violent as I kind of expected, but a lot more than I like. And control generally seems very... With model number three, which was flying very nicely, I wanted to give you an idea of what you could achieve by tweaking away with that screwdriver. And I think you've probably got the message. But you may be wondering why I referred to model number three as a true X-copter. It isn't really in the sense that I'm meaning because it has an FBV camera on the front and an FBV transmitter on the back. And those two items interfere with the aircraft's symmetry. I'm sure that the designers of the Thunder QQ Super very much based their design concepts on a symmetrical multi-rotor. And here is a genuinely symmetrical multi-rotor. It has got the same load on these two motors as is falling on these two motors. And the same. The same load on these two motors as these two motors. It is symmetrical. And that's what you can predict will fly best with the Thunder QQ Super. But, it has to be said, I've had quite a bit of success 
with aircraft which were a long way from being symmetrical. So, on to number four, which is this one, which had never flown before this test. You are watching the maiden flight. Arming. This is about 30%. And that's feeling pretty good. That's not feeling bad at all. It's quite gusty, so that sudden gain of height then was not entirely unexpected. I'm trying to hold it at approximately 500 mils. I'm trying to stay more or less over the same spot. And that's not going at all badly. creeping it back towards us and now forward and backwards again always easier coming downwind yep pretty good as proving flights go that was among the best. I love those motors. I've never had those before. Smooth, powerful, responsive, and surprisingly efficient in terms of duration. Later the same day, I flew that one for nine minutes. It's way above my average with that battery. Okay, now, one last wild indulgence. Oh, you thought this was all wild indulgence. You're a very stern critic. This is the prototype for an 820 quadcopter and it's done a lot of flying almost entirely with the KK 2.1 as you see here but yesterday it flew with the Thunder QQ Super and it was by no means disappointing. Wow, that is amazing. So much for my thinking that it preferred small models. That's about as smooth as I've seen this one ever fly. I'm going to stop deluding myself with adjusting the trims in flight. That's hands off now. Adding a little forward trim. In these conditions that is very impressive. I really liked the way the Giant 820 flew with this the other day. That was a very special thing for me because it hasn't flown that well. It spent a lot of time with the KK 2.15 and I have to ask myself why was I unable to achieve that level of flight with the KK and I think it's just that this is so easy to operate. There are so few mistakes you can make. You've just got that little screwdriver, you give it a tweak, if it goes better that's great, if it doesn't you have another go. Are there any negatives about this? Yep, I think that the $25 price tag is fabulous, but for $25 I would want at least a 20 cent screwdriver, because the screwdriver they provided, I wouldn't give a cent for it. Guy, come on guys. Down at the factory, you've got to make a screwdriver that fits the slot. End of criticism. It's a good buy if you just want to fly. A standard line of sight flying, maybe a bit of FPV, 
maybe even a bit of drone racing. I have the feeling that this would handle drone racing quite well. Anyway, I haven't tried that. I would like to see it fly in a much smaller frame, and I will very soon. You can bet on it.